Okay, we're back on. This heat has started in three, two, one, boom, we're on. We've got young 13 year old Saul Yigvik from Belgium, Pauline Katz, Alexia Kiefer Quintana, and Denise Blondet from Peru. Pauline Katz is from Switzerland, which is a hilarious thing for someone from a wave rider, but Pauline's mm. really good. And we've got Alexia, who's um, sailing for Germany, uh, but spends all her time in Canary Islands training. She and her brother Carlos are very, very good up and coming riders. Um, shout out to Carlos. We saw your giant stall forward, Carlos, yesterday on the Instagram. Congratulations. <laughs> and we also saw some of the Wave 360s that you sent your sister just to tease her. So well done, mate. <laughs> That's a classic rivalry. <laughs> Love to see it. Yeah, so for it, I've been seeing uh, Denise come out here to Pakistan Smile for many, many years. And she's another multi-sport athlete. She stand-up paddle races, stand-up paddle surfs. Um, she rides this wave in all its aspects. And so she's very much keyed in and tuned in. She was out there this morning uh, getting a feel for the sets. Low, 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 low. We're just, uh, it's a pretty b bit of a dead air out there. But they're moving around. They're, they're more or less in position. I think they're probably where they want to be. Let's see if we can give you some idea of this order. Uh, the second sail closest, second, who's this closest to us? That is likely to be Pauline, Pauline I think, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So Pauline getting on a wave now. Yep. Okay. Pauline's going to open her account with a mid-sized wave. Very smooth face. You can see the water churning and swirling in front there. But here we go. Here she goes. Oh, it's like butter. Yeah, no, that wave is very smooth. Again, we talked about that before, where it's like some of the bigger sets, oh. they get super choppy. This one is not... This is a dream. Not she a drop slashed out of it place. out there. I like to see that with fading back into the white water to open up into a nice top turn. Great wave awareness, knowing where you are. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a huge set out the back. I mean, lots of waves, but she's the only one riding so far. The others just seem to be not quite in position to capture yeah. it. Which, or, or maybe they don't want to get it yet. Maybe they're not ready. Those ones look nice. That one right after yeah, Pauline's well. look good. That was a great opening round, opening hit wave from Pauline. Who's that there? Oh, this must be Denise on a wave. Right. Just a bit behind it. But that's a beautiful wave. Yeah. Look at this. And oh. it's about to jack up, so let's see how she times this. Oh, just in time. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Denise. Again, she's got a lot of surfing experience too, so you see that coming into play. She's the sail has y almost no power in it at that point. You can see it was pretty pretty <laughs> lax, but she was using all of her board speed to make some really great turns happen. Wow! And right out the back, there's someone who's just gone down. I think. Oi. Oi, exactly. Uh, it could have been Alexia. Or oh, Denise yeah, is going to be in trouble there. Is she out of it? Yeah. Oh, well done. Good surfing experience to get out of that. Mm-hmm. Look at that world. Well, riding high. Clever. And decided <laughs> you could tell she was hesitating. She was like, should I kick out? Should I not kick out? I and don't then the know. Wave did it for her. I hope she's out of the line of this next one coming through. And let's see. So who we've got two athletes on the outside. So maybe nobody. Yeah, maybe. Maybe nobody went down. I thought I saw someone get on that wave and then they went on it. But look at that line. Look at that wave yeah, face. Pauline killed it. Yeah. That oh, is yeah. great stuff. Oh, and Denise. Denise is right in the critical zone. Wow. She hasn't got that sort of classic turning that uh, Pauline had, but mm -hmm. boy, her positioning and wave choice is good, isn't it? Definitely. And this wave definitely had a lot more critical sections as well to work with. Yeah, that's her wave experience, mm -hmm. talk, talking right there. She's picked the better wave. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so often the case that the first wave of a set is not the best. That's you know almost a guarantee, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. But any wave is better than nothing, and you've got two riders out here that are wishing that they'd been just a little bit more inside, <laughs> that they'd been a little bit closer, a little deeper. Yeah. Uh, and that's the nature of it, because that was definitely a set. I wouldn't say it was, uh, you know, a, a massive one, but uh, it probably was a once every 10 to 15 minute event. So now they've got to sit out there and wait and hope for the best. Right. We're just under five minutes into this, and uh, the first sets come through. So if it's 10 or 12 minute cycles, they might even get two more sets into this. Mm. So on the center of your screen there, you can see Sol de Greek from Belgium. She's 13 years old. She came to Fiji and she, she's 
fearlessly took on Cloudbreak. Just remarkable. And uh, went up on the reef a couple of times, brushed it off, went straight back out. I, I mean, that kind of attitude's remarkable. Yeah, she definitely has a pretty impressive mental fortitude for someone her age. Uh, just yesterday, she got into a kind of a incident or a collision with a kite surfer. A kite surfer dropped their kite yeah. uh, on her sail, and she ran right into it, and it looked pretty grisly. Like, yep. it was pretty gnarly. And she didn't seem rattled at all. In fact, she helped the kite surfer to grab his <laughs> board and take it back so that he could actually get himself yeah. back together. Well, he, l he lost his board. He got separated from it. And yeah. she went way out to sea to get it for him and bring uh -huh. it back. I mean, so not only just a great human thing to do out in the ocean because you don't, you don't, you don't choose sides in the ocean. You just help people when they need it. Certainly not. And, uh, you know, a lot of people would have been so annoyed with that situation that they wouldn't have done that. But not so. She just went straight out there, helped him, smile on her face back out no oh, exactly and i think she sailed she wave sailed for another hour or so before coming in and everybody was sort of waiting on the beach like oh my gosh you know what happened to soul is she okay and then i can't I, wait to hear how annoyed she is after about 15 <laughs> minutes everyone got bored they were like okay well i guess she's not coming in she wasn't annoyed at all she was just having a great time yeah it's pretty cool i think she's in position to get this one and it looks like a nice one it's a mid-sized wave let's see if she's got the wind for it is she Pumping, her board's moving. Not ah, quite. No. Tough. Okay, it's just very tough. And this is where patience come in. Comes in. I mean, mm -hmm. you're out there and you think, oh, I'm feeling frustrated that I'm not on a wave. I want to be on a wave. Mm -hmm. These waves are coming through. I can't get on them. But if you if you succumb to that frustration, you go inside too much. You end up being on the inside of the sets. Then you miss the sets, and you've really missed everything. Right. It's a, such a patience game, a mind game. It truly is, and, and in lots of situations in wave sailing, you know, you've you've got to learn to acknowledge the positives of the situation that you're in. It's like, okay, so I missed the set, but that means that I'm in great position for the next one. Exactly right. You know, two athletes got waves, but at the same time, they're way down there, and I've got the pick of whatever I want. Here comes Soul. This is a fantastic looking wave, Oof. sort of an in between set wave, but again, it's probably going to line up really nicely down the coast. Well done getting yourself in a position. This one is fading pretty quick, but it could have a nice double up. Yeah, and there is a bit of a double up. She's, it's not a huge potential scoring wave, but that really doesn't matter all the time. No. No, she's out. Okay, that'll be a low scoring wave. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and this is where you, you come into the situation where you, oh, was, it, was it right to do that? Definitely now I've got to get out? Because now she's going to be in trouble. Uh -huh. I mean, you've, you've got a pretty substantial set coming in, and she's way inside. And Alexia is in the spot. Mm -hmm. She's not in the spot for this one, but she might well be for the next one, and that could be the better one to get anyway. All right. Now, is she inside too oh, much? Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Yeah, she's looking at this and thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> but this is an optical illusion type <laughs> yeah, of thing yeah. where it's like she's actually in the perfect spot. She just needs to stay where she's at, and the wave will come to her. And she's realized that now. She's confident again. Nice. She's pulled herself back in. I hope she gets this because this looks so nice. I've had so many moments like that where I see the next wave coming. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Go, Alexia. Come on, Alexia. Yeah. Come on. There we go. In the straps, down the face of the wave, straight into a turn. That is not an easy thing to do. Oh, that's good. Look at this wave. Now she's getting oh, the ripples wow. across this. That oh was a good gosh. turn. Should we shout out to her brother right now? Hi, Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Missing you here in Peru, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Missing out on all the glory. Well, I don't know. He he posted some pretty glorious <laughs> stuff yesterday, but still. The glory today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Stay out of the way of that bit. Wow. Okay, she's going to do well on this one. Very no, well, well done. She's out of the strap. She's going to try to ride the white water in. Although. Uh, what do you do there? Just kind of yeah. digging yourself more into a hole. But she'll probably oh, get to the point. Oh, here's Soul again. Oh, Soul. How? Oh, she's gone upwind. Okay. That's very interesting. I wonder if she got a ride there. I could have swore that she was in a position where she was going to get absolutely annihilated in uh -huh. that set. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> she, a, a, she has a lucky horseshoe. And there's, and, uh, okay, so there's Sol heading out, and there's Alexia just um, getting out of that wave. Mm -hmm. Long wave rides for both of them. Yeah. And now a long way back. But they seem to have plenty of wind in their sail. This is much better than it was earlier in the day. Look yeah, at this. Yeah, definitely. You can oh. see all the texture on the wave. And this was such an excellently This is the wave. turn. Yeah. You could tell that she's really riding with power. Like, she had wind in her sail to actually be able to kind of throw the tail on that top turn. Classic. That's a good turn. Classic. 
And she was smart enough to try and get tangled up with that bit. Definitely. Oh. Whoa. Okay, but got tangled up with that bit. Oh, the two of them. Okay, well, this is what you were talking about. Double tangle. <laughs> <laughs> this is what maybe they'd avoided, yeah. but oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's completely different situations because for Alexia, she's like, well, I can deal with that. And for Sol, she's like, man, this is uh, a deeper hole than I wanted to be in. Right. With... So the score is now Alexia and Sol with two waves. Alexia's first wave was just a 0.67, so it's mm -hmm. barely a score. But her second wave was an 8, that wave that we just watched, an 8. That's in the excellent range, and that is the highest score we've seen today. And the scores are still moving around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's just give the judges time to sort of work their stuff out. But um, Sol Diegrich uh, has 1.83 and a 3.5 for that second wave. Denise Blondet has a 4.3, and Pauline Katz has a 4.1. So look at that. Who'd have thought? The young guns are taking them on and they're beating them. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great job from the judges as well because Alexia was the first person to do a turn where I was like, whoa. It actually like took me by surprise to see her take that line and actually you know power that turn through. Uh, and I think the judges probably saw the same thing and decided to reward it because they saw her intention on that wave to, to truly ride it, you know, no holds bar. Look at this. Okay, that's Pauline. Pauline. Beautiful waves. Okay. You know, and Pauline's got a absolutely solid strategy going too. I mean, she's got two great waves now. That's a good turn. The shoulder's kind of gone on her there. Yeah. But she's staying in the pocket. She's staying smart. I love that the two young guns are coming up and taking on these experienced riders. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Okay, and she's kicking out there. Smart. The wave scoring potential is probably done. Mm -hmm. Get out there and get another one. So we've yeah. got 14 minutes to go, Ben. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, uh, we sort of talked about that yesterday where it's like wave sailing competition is so wide open because it's all about how you perform on the day and how you attune yourself to the conditions that are moving around you and changing constantly. And you know, seasoned or not, experienced or not, how many, however many times you've come out here, at some point you just have to luck into the right wave, get it, read it well, um, and then the scores are yours. And so there is a lot of opportunity for someone that's young and up and coming to just surprise everyone. It happens quite a lot, actually. Yeah. I mean, um, especially as the field is opening up with more events in more places and more people from more places uh, getting this chance. Uh, we just had a gust of wind hit us and move the car, didn't we? Is that, that's a bit unusual. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what's going on? But uh, yeah, again, it's a bit like the things we were saying yesterday. It's so great to see so many people have the opportunity to test themselves. Yes, definitely. The windsurfing world is, is much wider uh, because of all these events being linked together. It's, it's a wonderful thing to see. I mean, there's a lot of windsurfers that have been just completely off of my radar that are now coming in and, and showing us that it's like, wow, how vibrant, how um, diverse is this sport? You know, stylistic differences are huge on tour, and it, it's been really cool to see, and it's been inspiring to me, too. I've, I've definitely taken a lot of notes from the different competitors that I've gone against this year. It also puts a bigger challenge out there. I mean, you know, you in you and Morgan in Fiji are a great example. I mean, you guys are, you know, world-class major event winning, you know, heroes of the wave riding world. And yet, even you and go to Fiji, you make a little error and you're punished now. Like, errors just are really badly punished. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's like uh, I've got a heat coming up in the quarterfinals that's got uh, Morgan, <laughs> Baptiste Clarec, and myself. And, uh, you know, depending on who comes through the repercharge round, it could potentially be Antoine. Could like be I'm Antoine. Talk, talking to Antoine, and it's like, <laughs> if you win your heat, dude, then you're in our heat. Man, your quarterfinals are full-on final. And, yeah, so it's incredible. But then at the same time, you sort of zoom out and you look at the other quarterfinals, and you're like, well, mm. all of these are I don't know which heats. one I want to be in. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the level of windsurfing has just, you know, erupted in that sense where a... a Heat that you would usually say, okay, well, that's got to be a semifinal or a final or whatever. That's just run-of-the-mill quarterfinals material now. Right. I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, that's exciting. to make. It's For the fans, it's amazing because you get more heats to watch that are super high level. 
We see on screen here Antoine getting a bit of a lift out. Now he's heading out. He's um, super excited. Saying hi to the drone there. Big <laughs> smile on his face. Look at, he said, look at this. Hope look you win, this. buddy. A <laughs> uh, bit of a story about Antoine was in the first round, he, very surprisingly, top seed in the heat, but ended up in third spot, um, which he was really bummed out about, of course. Mm. But, uh, you know, there he is, smile on his face, heading out for his repercharge. And I, I pity the other riders in his heat. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, Antoine's a little rocky-ish, where it's like he's kind of going to get, like, punched around a little bit and then he'll get into gear you know what i'm saying yeah like yeah he needs he needs the motivation somehow like yeah. he needs to be like, shocked out of that complacency or whatever you know whatever it is but he fires up mm -hmm. like he's been in kind of in vacation mode you know he sort of was like oh, i wasn't even really planning on coming to pocket smile and then i decided because i saw how many people were coming and i thought it would be fun and blah 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 and you know all of a sudden after yesterday getting rocked the way that he did his whole routine throughout the day has changed completely, and now he is watching the surf more intensely, more eagerly, um, and he's preparing himself for, to, to show us what he can do, because he can do a lot. That's kind of one of the things I love about the dingle, is that it, you have your heat, mm. and if you don't do well, like it scares the shit out of you. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and you're like, okay, now it's down to death. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Got to put everything on the line, and it means that you know one of these relatively early round heats is suddenly everything's on the line for a major player. Yes, and when that happens, boy, do you see fireworks! And then like the shuffling of the deck as well, where it's right. like everyone's seated a certain way in round one, and if everything goes to plan, then you know the top seeds usually just keep making it through until eventually they face each other in the later rounds. But then something like this happens with Antoine, and suddenly it's like you've got a top seed that could go anywhere. Yeah, and, and, and it's uh, one of the really weird consequences of a top seed not doing well is that it affects the other top seeds. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a, a pinball machine where yep. suddenly, you know, he's going to come through and he's Throws chaos into the mix. Totally. Yeah, so suddenly, you know, you're, you're in a heat with, you know, God knows, <laughs> and you're looking at it going, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm in a tough heat that's likely to get tougher. We haven't yet seen people, uh, I haven't yet seen anyone try and game that first round because it's too risky to game it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anybody who loses it could always say that they were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it just, it's just better this way if I go through the loser's round. <laughs> it's for, it's yeah. for my style. Right. <laughs> that seems like a good idea. <laughs> I prefer to sail more. Mm. Now, we'll just review these scores here because Alexia Kiefer-Quintana is in the lead with a total heat score of 9.14, and Pauline Katz is now bumped up to second place and those are the two posi with a 9, and those are the two positions that are going through. So when we look at it, Sol de Grieg has two waves, but one of them is a 1.8 and the other one's a 3.4, and Denise Blondet has a 4.3 but no second wave score. So it's still wide open with, uh, what is it, eight minutes to go. Yeah. Really, this thing could move around a lot, couldn't it? But Alexia is in a very good position with such a dominant best score. She really just needs a second wave of even a moderate thing. And she she's, really she's needs super a second safe. wave. Yeah, you hate to lose with an 8.4. Oh. I'm sure she'll get one with eight minutes to go. But, I mean, that's what she needs to be looking at. She needs to just get something in the bag. Get, get a three and a half or a four. Anything you need to do. Mm -hmm. Don't get too fussy. Yeah, she's not in view right now. It'll be interesting to see exactly where she's at in the lineup. Um, you know, when you kick out on a wave in the, you know, around where that buoy is to mark, you know, where the end of the wave is for competition, it's pretty easy to get back out and start making progress upwind. But as soon as you take a couple of waves on the head, and we saw that both Sol and Alexia were both got flipped by that next wave that came through, you get stuck in that rip. Here she is now. Yeah, so she's trying to make it upwind, and she's pretty far inside and pretty far away from where the waves are breaking still. Uh, again, that rip is so powerful. As soon as you get stuck in the white water, it totally changes your heat. There's that buoy down in the lower area, and that's Federico Mauricio. Federico just, you know. He's just decided. toying in the wrong part of the wave, buddy. Yeah. Right on the edge there. Come on, fella. <laughs> Everyone who's read the riot act this morning, um, just to give you some background here, look at that splitting wave. That's crazy. Everyone who's read the riot act saying, you know, do not sail in the competition area mm -hmm. while the heat's on. You will be penalized three points off your best wave in your next heat. That was a pretty heavy uh, heavy, heavy bit of action from the head judges that there. That is tough, yes. 
Yeah, I went out yesterday thinking that it was over and was totally wrong. Well, yesterday there was a communication breakdown for that last heat, wasn't there? That's like no one, no one's going to get in trouble for that. That was just a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. But yeah, today we just want to make sure it's clear, and it is. Like it's pretty clear. Yeah. Hey, well here, we, here we have Alexia attacking on a wave, but I don't know if she's going to be able she's to get it. She's a long way down, isn't yeah. she? I mean, she may choose to just take one of these, which mm. Mm, it's not I don't know. Bad idea. But she'd have to be really far inside to do that. Right. She'd be smarter to go further over and further up if she can. She has time. Soul's pumping, but I don't know. It, there's not much wave there. Not really. That wind has improved out there. That's what we felt in the rocking in the car. You can see that gust coming across the water there, can't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. On the we left hand upper side of the screen, that's a decent gust. Now, I wonder if that, that means it's turned more offshore. What are the angles there? No, no, it's still it the same. It almost looks like a bit side. Mm. I mean, it doesn't get truly side shore or even kind of side onshore until you get way up the point there. That's when it twists around, yeah. Out the back, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's another advantage of running the contest down here as well. It's like the wind stays offshore, and it makes it that much easier to get up wind. Uh -huh. And it makes it that much easier to have wind while you're on the wave. Well, in light wind, when it's that offshore angle, you can use the apparent wind to just really drive you hard, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is very far from being just like one tack uh, to get back up to the lineup, you know, which is kind of the ideal at Pakis Miles, to be able to you know, tack out of a wave and just immediately start your line basically like parallel with the direction of the wave that the uh, wave is breaking so you can just go right back up to the point and catch another one yep that's not happening today not yet it might happen later like mm -hmm. what time is it it's 3.51 nearly 4 o'clock in the afternoon it's around now that it usually starts to shift offshore-ish definitely um, whether it does that today or not we don't know, really know we've got unusual warm ocean currents across the, the coast here in Peru I mean people are out in you know board shorts or you know light 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 wetsuits as yep. opposed to the normal heavy stuff and um that just feels weird doesn't it yeah yeah no it's been very strange like because it's been a couple of years since i've been here uh i think it was less jarring but for all of the you know sort of mainstay guys that keep coming back every year they're sort of scratching their heads they all brought their four three wetsuits and they're wondering why they did yeah exactly um and everyone's boiling in them, so they're working out ways to get them lighter and unzip them and all sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a kite on the left side of the screen. Yeah. So you can see Sol Diegrich on the right, um, trying to move back into position. You can see, is that That's Alexia? Alexia yeah. yeah, she's definitely close now. She's in a great position. Alexia is really pulling off some great strategy here. Yeah, she's got three and a half minutes left, so she's looking for this set that's coming through. This is a... Looks like a pretty sizable one. Paul Definitely one that's swinging out wide. Uh huh. Pauline's uh, in a good position, although for th these sets up, this is a medium-sized set, so I don't know if it's going to be. She might be too far out even. Anyway, we'll see what happens. There's still time for another set wave to come through. Yeah. I wonder what happened to Denise. Where did she go? Now you can see out the back there, other riders for the other heats, um, just getting in position ready when it's big like this and when they're you know it's tricky to get out it's smart for riders to get out well before their heat just in case they run into trouble so we end up getting riders who get out there early and have to just sit around they're not allowed to get on waves and uh, disrupt the process of the heat so there they are just floating around out there waiting for theirs oh Pauline here we go swamped, can she hold it no ah. she's gonna go down yeah disaster strikes oh, oh Alexia Oh, she was oh, up quick Alexia. smart. <laughs> she, oh, oh, oh no. oh, no. Okay. Oh, she's really she's determined safe. to get up. She's safe. All right, and she's in the prime, prime spot for a pretty beautiful looking wave. 100%. Oh, this yes. This is what she needed. Let's see if she can pull it off. Well, she doesn't need it. She's in the lead, but there you go. That's why she's in the lead. She keeps putting herself into the position for these really beautiful waves. Oh, wow. Well done. And we'll see Sol out the back, maybe get this next one and have another scoring opportunity. But let's watch Alexia. Really nice cutting back into the critical section there. Opening up the sail so that she can get that much more vertical. Like, these are all really cool little nuances of wave sailing. It's awesome to see. Rodeo. <laughs> Rodeo. Rodeo in the white water. Now, remember, Alexia's second wave score at the moment is 0 0.67. Yeah, so she can only improve at this point. This is going to be great for her. Fantastic. Oh, Soul dropping in on a big...
big whitewater section and able to pull it off, but at the same time, she's got some ground to make up. Alexia going for it. Wow. Yes. Nice. Oh, she's going to get a good score on this wave, too. She's going to smash this heat. And, I mean, I would imagine she's going to ride this one all the way in. Yeah. She's yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Have fun with it. You've earned it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How much of a dream wave is this? She was anxious this morning. She was unsure. She hasn't sailed here when it's big. She hasn't, sa you know, she hasn't sailed here very much. And, and she was really unsure. And she was, she was worried, you know. Yeah. But I imagine, imagine how excited she must feel now. Well, she's got a lot of very supportive people to, to lean on as well. That's a really cool thing about, like, all of us staying together and sort of sharing this break together. You know, we're all meeting up for meals together to talk about the waves and everything like that. It's like, it's a support group. 100%. Well, it can have both effects, though, can't it? It can also, you know, wind up the sort of, everyone talking about, oh, it's so big, it's so big, <laughs> it's so big. And it can start to wind everyone up after a while. And in truth, it is big, but it's not that big yet. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, just the constant speculating about the conditions sort of like throws you off. You're like, oh, I forgot to drink water because I've been <laughs> sitting here talking with these guys about the wind for the whole time. Well, that's the end of the heat. Now, I loved this turn, uh, getting back up into the critical section. That was great. I'm loving watching Alexia sail these waves. Mm -hmm. Sail it like an expert for sure. We've got Paul on the boat with Pedro following behind. And yeah, while this was happening, Sol did take off on a wave. Yeah. And it was a pretty crazy, uh, like, whitewater takeoff. Pretty good. Mm hmm. Uh, we haven't seen Sol's full wave, but I mean, imagine that's pretty good. Let's see what the scores are. So, Denise also has a second wave score now, which we didn't see properly. But that was, she's got a 4.3 and a 2.6, but she's still in fourth at 6.97 overall. Alexia just got a 6.57 for that second wave, nice. which means she's got a 15.04 total heat score. That is dominating. Yeah. Yeah, that is rock and roll. As Pauline Katz has got a 9 in second place, and Sol has got a uh, 6.97. It's just changing around a little bit. And then, oh, Denise. Oh! Wow. Denise has moved up. Denise has moved up. Well, it doesn't make much difference, because the real, the real issue here in these heats is whether or not the top two go through, yeah, if, if you're in that group. Advanced. So it looks like, we haven't had it signed off yet by the head judge, but it looks like it's Alexia Kiefer and Pauline Kratz moving through to the semi-finals. Nice job. Yeah. Now the other two will have a chance in round two to join them, and that's it. Head judge is signed off. You can see the complete sign at the top there if you're watching the heat things. And it is done. All right. Well, congratulations, Alexia Kiefer and Pauline Kratz, for going through. And uh, we'll have a bit of a break, and we'll come back and see you guys at the start of the third women's heat round one